Mesdames, Messieurs, bonsoir, chers participants. Okay. Hello, dear participants. Good evening. Good morning. I believe you are all connected on this webinar. My name is Dr. Amadou Husseini. I'm, I'm a director for family planning at the Ministry of Health in, for the population and social services. And it is an honor to be the moderator of this webinar. And this webinar is part of a series which is called Lesson Learned from Task Sharing to Scale Up Contraceptive Services in Niger. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are all online today. And as you know, Niger within the framework of its uh, family planning policy has designed and deploy different strategies one of them being the delegation of tasks, which is a high impact strategy. And this falls within the, the resolution of public ministers of the CDAO in order to adopt this delegation of tasks for different family planning services for different countries, part of that space. So this webinar will be about sharing experiences. And today's the second series, as the second episode of this series. And today we're going to focus on healthcare, um, community healthcare workers and share experiences with Pathfinder staff. So Idrissa Adamou, for those who know him already, he is a high level player in that area in Niger with regards to the deployment of this uh, scaling up contraceptive services in Niger. And he's been involved for so many years in the family planning and sexual and health and sexual reproductive rights. And he has been working to deploy high impact services, but also pilot uh, projects in order to boost family planning in youth populations. So, I'm not sure that if Idrissa is ready to go, but before I give him the floor, I would like to remind you a couple of the logistical things. So first off, you have access to simultaneous interpreting in English. I think you have the rules of the game in the chat. So you need to click on the globe and you can select your channel, whether French or English. Now, with regards to questions, we invite you to post your questions and comments on the chat box. And when we reach that part um, at the end of this presentation, unfortunately, we do not have the opportunity to, we, we do not have the possibility to give you the floor directly, but we will go over your questions that had been posted in the chat and answer appropriately. So that being said, I am now going to give the floor to Idrissa. And I invite you to turn off your phone so that there's no interference. So Idrissa, are you on the floor? Yes, I am here. So I hope you've understood the, the rules of the game. I give you the floor and hoping that you will be able to, to manage your time correctly on your end. Uh, sorry again. So unfortunately, Idrissa, as, as you can see, is in a very peculiar 
a, a position on his video, but he's, he's, it's all good. So please focus on, on what he's going to say, the interesting information he's going to be sharing. Idrissa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Amadrou, for, for this great introduction and presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, good evening, good morning. So my name is Idrissa Damou. I'm technical coordinator of the program for the Zender area. I want, before anything else, uh, I want to thank everybody who is present today, who took, took time to be present with us today. So the moderator explained it very well. This presentation will be about the different lessons learned from task sharing to scale up uh, contracep uh, contraceptive services in Niger, which is the second part, which is an initiative to mobilize and have access to contraception for all. And that's the second phase. Today, I'm very honored to take the floor to represent all my colleagues that I have been working with and to present you this task of sharing for uh, um, implant delivery. Next slide. So here's more or less your, our presentation and how it's going to work today. So first off, we're going to start with a specific context for this intervention, but also the definition of key concepts and terms that are commonly used during the presentation. Uh, we're going to describe the task delegation implementation area. We also want to remind you the objectives of this intervention, the different methods of this implementation, the main results that we have observed, the lesson learned after the implementation of this intervention, but also the constraints, the obstacles that we have encountered, a conclusion, and of course, the main recommendations that we would like to share with you uh, from the stakeholders. Next slide. So how about some context here? So uh, the moderator already shared a few pieces of information. So in Niger, family planning is a low cost and cost effective intervention, but its access, it is limited by a shortage of health personnel and restrictive policies regarding the roles of lower and middle level categories. So we, in order to increase modern contraceptive prevalence and contribute to the reduction of maternal, neonatal and infant mortality, the, uh, the Ministry of Health Services has adopted task shifting. And this dynamic falls within the framework of the implementation of the res resolution of the 80th ordinary session of the ECOWAS, Assembly of Ministers of Health, to promote good practices in the delegation of tasks in the implementation of family and reproductive health programs in the member states. So still to adhere to this resolution, Niger has reviewed the regulatory environment by adopting decree 2019-408 PRN MSP of July 26 to 2019. And it talks about the mentality of application of the law of 2006 on reproductive health in Niger. These regulations provide, among other things, for the transfer of the following main competences. So now the decree authorizes the, the how the, the, the organize the, the authorized specific services that are provided for in the decree. And now some health heads are authorized to offer implants and some agents can offer SDMA. So uh, the, the good thing about implants is that it's, it is no way people can forget anymore. And it's not like pills that we can easily forget. It's a long-term method. And also to operationalize, operationalize these new guidelines as Finder International through the impact. Uh, the, the, project, the impact to project that supported the introduction of implants in 405 health centers. Next slide, please. So, yeah, we want also to remind 
delegation of tasks, what it is exactly. So this is one of the strategies recommended by the WSO to address the shortage of qualified human resources in health in order to extend access to services to the maximum population. It allows the delivery of essential services with a high impact on the reduction of morbidity and mortality, particularly among mothers and children, which represents the main public health problem for developing countries like Niger. And it constitutes a major opportunity for the repositioning of family planning in Niger. Next slide, please. Next slide. And here, this is the reminder of delegated FP services by aging category in Niger. So you see that there are the main aging categories. You can see general practitioners and senior technicians, CDs. Then, of course, for obstetrics and gynecologists, midwives, and nurses, community health workers, and community based distribution agents. And as you can see, they, they have different responsibilities. You have pills, injectables, implants, insertion and removal, and IUD insertion and removal, and tubal ligation. And you see that the, the first category can do pretty much everything. The midwives can do the full first, like the nurses. And then the CHW can do pills, injectables, and implants. And the you, you see that there are, it's very recent that they're authorized to do the implant insertion and removal. Uh, and um, at the level of um, community-based distribution agents, they are not authorized to do that, but they can deal with pills and injectables for contraception, so they are authorized to, to administer injectables and, and some injections. And our next conference will actually be on this specifically. Next slide, please. For today, we're going to, to talk about the task delegation at the second level. So for or for a certain level. And I was saying that there are some definitions we want, some concepts we want to define together. So because um, this is what I'm going to use along the presentation. So the integrated health center, this is what we call IHC or SI in French. And like the Cas de Santé is, is like a hut, the health hut. This is what we talked about. It's um, officially, it officially became a community participant participation structure. Because initially it was run by not qualified health workers, but now there are more and more qualified health workers, nurses in particular. So, some, some nurses can be recruited to work in, in, this, uh, in these huts. And we try not to, uh, the, the delegation here, um, in this delegation of tasks, we're talking about unqualified workers, but we try more and more to have qualified workers to replace those unqualified workers. For the community, and then you have the community health workers, as you just talked about. Impact two is the mobilization initiative for access to contraceptions for all. Phase two, this is what we are now. Um, then CBDA, it's a community. This this is community based distribution agent. That's what we talked about earlier. And these are recruited and trained, and equipped to provide services of family planning. We also have DET, District Executive Team, it's ECD in French. And this is the team that manages and conducts activities within the district. 
um, FP, of course, family planning. QIT is quality improvement team. It's a part of the FP service delivery improvement collaborative. And this is something that we implemented. Uh, the, the good thing, the, the asset, the asset of this uh, quality improvement team is that they have a culture of analysis and defined solutions to the problems that are that, that they face. And so within our, our project, this is there's really something crucial because they, they, they can work in, hand in hand with other teams to and take advantage of each other's assets assets. And the other concept we wanted to define was quality. In our study, we it was assessed from the point of view of compliance with medical recommendations and the standard of care to be delivered to the client. Here it, it took into account the technical skills of the providers. We, we could not um, uh, focus on the satisfaction of patients, unfortunately. But next slide. Um, the area of intervention and duration. The, the duration is two years. Here, these are so the results of these two years from January 2020 and August to August 2021. And you can see three different regions. So I told you that the, this intervention was implemented around quality and the team that was working on quality. You see that uh, the total of uh, the, the member, team members for quality improvement are 169. And then there, there are 541 um, health workers. Oh, sorry, health health. And the, among those 541, there were four. 105 uh, trained um, staff that could, um, that was trained on implants within the health huts. So for those who don't know anything about Niger, there are some, th th those regions that were chosen to implement this intervention are here on the map and you can see that the, the, respond, the, the agents that were the, the, these um, health workers were mostly gathered in this three. Next slide. The objectives of the approach. So, First, the, the main objective is to contribute to increasing the rate of use of multi-contraceptive methods, particularly long-acting methods at the community level. And the idea was to build capacity and equip community health workers to provide implants to FP clients or patients in health facilities. Also, to accelerate the use of modern long-acting contraception at the community level through the introduction of implants in the package of activities in 405 health centers. Health huts create, also create a safe environment for the supply of implants at the health at level, management of biomedical waste and management of possible side effects. Also, we wanted to strengthen the documentation, the data management and experience sharing, and also strengthen social mobilization to increase demand. Next slide. So here we are. So how did we do that? How did we introduce implants at the level of health cuts? Well, that was a whole process. And this is how we, we we proceeded. So number one was the first, we had to, uh, to make sure the regulations 
for family planning task delegation was adopted. So the efforts that were provided to make sure it would be the, the regulations, the official regulations would be adopted, it finally passed in July 2019. And it was a lot of effort to reach that. So but what we had to do was to establish an advocacy committee and conduct we conducted advocacy cycles with the Ministry of Public Health and uh, development of an advocacy document to accelerate the signing of texts on the delegation of tasks in the context of family planning. And I can tell you that Pathfinder really played a huge role in this. Also, in the, whether it was within the development um, of the, doc of the uh, document to accelerate the signing of text or the establishment of an advocacy committee, because really it was really hard to get the signature of this decree, the ratification of this decree in July 2019. And, and then when we got the, the answer, the positive answer, the idea for us was afterward to work on the offer and we had to screen for to select 405 health cuts for the introduction of the implant offer so the idea was to select again to screen health huts by the health by health managers on the basis of predefined criteria so those criteria were were health facilities attached to the providers with quality improvement teams and we had to make sure that health facilities uh, and uh, we and also the criteria were the other one was health facilities with an unqualified community health worker that we could move forward and then once we identified all the health workers in their health heads what we did was that so, so we first, as I said, we focused on the facilities with quality improvement teams, and then we focused on those huts where there were unqualified community health workers. That was the basics, the, 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 the key of our strategy. We tried to, of course, to, to train some community health workers. And we made sure that they would they would attend at least one session with with uh, fifteen health workers, and to do so, we were able to train everybody. Thank you. Slide next slide. So first, a third step of this implementation. It was capacity building process for CHWs, as you, can see, as you can see on the slide, it's a whole process that we need to follow. So first off, we had to adapt the teaching material because the previous modules wasn't focusing much on implants. So we had to update, we had to update the material but also the tools of evaluation and all other support. So everything was basically uh, reviewed. We reproduced the, the teaching materials, we printed out, uh, adapted to the size of the population. Then we identified the trainers by district. And for each session, we organized three supervisors, we, tra we trained three supervisors per session, including one regional trainer who would come from the region, one trainer uh, specialized in contraception on the district level, and, oh, and one tutor, one female tutor. I will explain that uh, later. And those people are being recruited from a different approach, which is a tutor tutoring. So it's not exactly the same type of training, but they're competent to 
per, to perform the, um, the the implant to 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 do the implants. So they are trained, and they have significantly helped, especially with regards to uh, demonstrations and uh, training, and also practice to show very um, to in a very accurate manner how it works. Uh, next phase was the planning of training sessions, five day sessions for with each um, with 15 participants per session. Those are divided into two phases. So first off, a theoretical class uh, indoors and a practical training for two days. And the reports show that, that the results were deeply appreciated. They were very successful. And uh, during each session, the theory class uh, showed the demonstration on and the anatomy of the arm and how to how to do how to perform the implant. So we basically use props to show how it would how it would work, but also there was a real time practice on the clients during cl during clinical placements, and that was performed thanks to the help of trainers. So many of those health workers had the ability to practice on those e plants before they went back to their own um, uh, health huts. Next slide. So now moving on to the fourth part, our goal was all healthcare workers have all the necessary information available to them so that they're ready to get to work once they go back to, um, to their health huts. So we don't want we don't want any lag in between between the moment that they finish the, the session, the training session, and they get started with work. So the endowment of medical consumables, the, especially that the the, the, the novocaine that uh, that helps the the implants, you know, it it releases it removes the pain. Um, the initial allocation of the of the plant, well, everything that's basically needed to to put the implant in. After that, everybody was prepared to order the implants and to get ready to work. And at least 10 implants were, um, were inserted uh, directly after the, after the training. The other element of the operalization is the follow-up, which is an important step in the implementation of this approach. So first off, a follow-up organized post-training. So at least two visits. There was also the, uh, the creation of a guide that would be used to, uh, to monitor and to do a, a decent and thorough follow-up. So this development of a post-training follow-up guide is performed by two trainers per district. And there's also the, the monitoring, what are the monitoring techniques there? Document review, but also the observation of providers and work environment and interviews with, with providers. So we encourage them. So in each, in each site, we encourage to select one client who would be willing to be uh, to be part of this observation and of this follow up and just to be to be part of this um, 
uh, just to make sure that the, everything is done appropriately, the implant is uh, inserted appropriately. So there was also interviews with uh, providers just to make sure that the follow-up was done ac um, accordingly. The other point that is, uh, that is key here is the organization of local supervision, super, sorry, supervision by CSI leaders. And we want to make sure that all these, th that this follow-up has helped the practice of, um, of implant delivery. There was also different uh, punctual sessions performed by the by different re on, on the different levels, such as the regional and the district level. So joint monitoring organization on other levels, including Pathfinder, just to keep. Um, to keep um, following up and monitoring the implementation of this, um, of this service and the scaling up. So in, in conclusion, this has really significantly helped the practice of, uh, of implants by healthcare workers. Next slide. Next slide. So here are the results after this, uh, the, pro the whole process that I have just described. So we have a number, we basically train 405 um, CHW, 210 for the, the Zinda region, 150 for Doso, 45 for, for Taua. And let me remind you that we have only three health districts in, in Tahua and the other regions we have 10, eight or 10 respectively. So a total of 405 trained agents, oh, healthcare workers. Next slide. So here are the results of implant insertions performed by, by um, CHWs over two years, from January 2020 until August 2021. But there was also uh, the training phase here. So maybe the, 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 the time period was slightly shorter if we don't take into account the, the training. But as you can see, during the second phase from September 2020 until August uh, 2021. So sorry, the first, the first session, we have a 726 implant insertions at the first phase. And you can see the second phase from September 2020 until August 2021, which really where we were cruising, quote unquote, over 3,000 insertions uh, performed by those... Um, those um, uh, healthcare workers. So a total of 3,756 clients who benefited from, uh, from this offer within Health Huts. It is a very good figure because if we didn't have this implementation, maybe those women would not have benefited uh, from this uh, intervention. So it's a great success. And the fact that those services are provided within the communities makes it easier for those communities to have access. So this, uh, this proximity is really helpful. And we might even say that it might be one of those uh, strong points. Uh, one of those strong points for this intervention, bring the, bring the intervention close to the beneficiaries bring it close to the to the demand and it's going to help the demand grow next slide
And now next slide. So let's go over some of element, elements of success. So first off, we can tell everybody now that anybody who wants to implement uh, this approach, if trained CHWs are well-trained, even though they're not qualified, they can perform a great job. They can actually perform the insertion and the, and the, and the taking out of implants. The technical support provided by the CHW's lead, CHW leaders during the supervision in the process of appropriation and mastery of the practice of insertion and removal of implants was a success. And this can also be done through the financing by other partners. We also observe that they were uh, adhering to universal precautions for infection control. Uh, we need we need to um, we need to check to be mindful of time here. Thank you so much, Dr. Hamadou. And the acceptance of implants by women, despite, despite uh, rumors spread by some religious leaders and social networks. So when we started this, um, this program, we started hearing that, that there's a video that went viral um, with, with of a woman who had this gaping wound um, because of an implants, but we managed to, to curb the situation and to reach the, um, to get to the results that we, that we presented to you. Next slide. Uh, Okay, so now we would like to talk about constraints and difficulties that we have encountered, um, among others, insufficient technical materials and medical equipment in some of the health centers visited. So blood pressure monitors, for example, adult scales, examination tables, and that was a, a big uh, a huge gap in, in some health centers. The high mobility of the trained agents, which may reduce the sustainability of the acquired knowledge. Because once the trained agent is assigned to a specific hut or health hut, then if the equipment is not there, unfortunately, the agent cannot work. That's a big problem of mobility. Because the agent has knowledge and he goes away with it and he's not motivated to practice his, and implement his, and apply his knowledge. Also the lack of FP5 in the health centers, centers to ensure proper filing and follow up time, right? But that's great. You have one more minute to conclude. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, sure. I will conclude, I promise. <laughs> so this is the conclusion, lesson learned. So, the, the idea is here to say that the delegation of tasks has made it possible to serve the most remote populations who will no longer need to travel long distances to the health hubs and to their health workers to receive implants. And also I wanted to say that health workers are able to insert and remove implants if their skills are strengthened and they contribute greatly to the improvement of indicators at the health district level. Because again, even though they might be unqualified. If they are trained, they can do a great job. And this, this is very important. And this is what was said uh, by health uh, leaders. So it's not something we made up. Conclusion? Okay, so to conclude, delegation of 
has been tasked contributes to improving geographic access to contraceptive methods and respect for human rights. It is essential to maintain a high level of quality and safety of services provided to beneficiaries when implementing task delegation. In, in Niger, our community health workers in health huts are an essential link in improving access to a wide range of contraceptive methods, including in plants in under, uh, underserved or remote areas. And there are a lot, there are like more, two, more than 2,000 um, unqualified workers who were trained and who could do a good job afterwards. So for, for HWs to fully implement this delegation of tasks, they need to be well trained, supervised, and provided with the necessary inputs for implant delivery. This is super important. Recommendations. I'm sorry, moderator, I'm almost done. Okay, if you if you go over it, yeah. So our main recommendations were that we we recommend extend the offer of grants to all functional health workers in the, in the country. Continue advocate for consistent funding of the family planning task force the plan that was recovering 2020 to 2022. We also recommend providing on-site supervision of CHY, the, the reviews and implement certification program process for community health workers in implant practice to strengthen and maintain the quality of implant provision at the community level, and also ensuring the availability of medical equipment and consumables necessary for the insertion and removal of implants. Very, th thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for this wonderful presentation. I, I was very kind with Idrissa uh, in terms of timing because I thought his presentation was really interesting and really well done. And I think it's very, very relevant and important. So as you may have understood, the presentation that was shared today was really to focus on the implementation of this intervention that we think is really important about um, empowering health work, community health workers with implants, with implants delivery, insert, insertion and removal. And that was, the, this implementation was for two years, like we saw in the presentation, but really we recommend, it, it, it is recommended as we saw that uh, it's an approach that should be um, longer. That should, I think, I mean, it's, it's gonna be your judgment, but this is something we need to appreciate, I believe, because this is an initiative that has been very powerful. So this uh, methodology uh, that they followed in this project, like uh, as Elisa said, is that it, it's really about delegation of tasks in Niger. And, and it's, we saw that it was important to select health huts that we need to focus on. And also we saw that it was important to uh, identify those health workers where we have to, to, to empower, that we have to empower. Also something about processes, that uh, all those steps that we saw during the project that were adapted also uh, to, to scale up from one health, one hut to another. And also like we saw, uh, of course, what was important here was that it, it was important to provide these health huts with consumable and, and all the goods that they needed and the equipment and this, uh, these, the, there were follow-up sessions that were very important in the in, in, during this project, all along the, the cycle of this project. And what I want to say is that, of course, we were there was a, this work was in collaboration of the health minister ministry. And I think what 
we need to remember here is that within the it was a, a very the, the outcome is fantastic because the number of implants inserted is really amazing. So uh, about we saw about during the presentation some key elements that Idrissa shared with us too. Of course, there were some constraints and difficulties as we saw, but of course we agreed that there's always there are always some and. Uh, Again, even the, the lesson learned here is that even unqualified health workers, even, even though they don't have the qualifications, then if they are trained, they can really, really do a good job. And I think it's important to remember that. Regarding recommendations, we, we think that these recommendations are justified and actually relevant, very relevant. They, they talk about the, the, about the mobilization of resources for health workers. We heard that there were two, more than 2,000 that were trained and we believe that it can be more. And I think it's important also to focus on the, the capacity building and reinforcement. And I think this recommendation is very important to implement. In, in any case, Lisa, thank you so much. And thank you, uh, everyone. Now we're going to go to the second step, which is a question and answer session. Of course, there were some questions asked in the chat. And maybe Idrissa, can you have a look at the questions? Do you cover, so the first question. It was asked by Agrima Tancano, do you, cover all health parts in the district of the, the, the region of Zinder? If you would like to answer, or oh, oh, you wrote it down, great. So, okay. And then who gives consumables, medical consumables to health workers for administering implants? Yeah, yeah, I wrote it down, you can go ahead. And also the third question, if there's a nurse, a nurse who's in, at the level of a of a health hut is um, in the category in in the health worker, the community health worker category, is he authorized to offer the package of services that are usually limited to their health workers, or should he just um, stick to those services that are competency of unqualified health workers. Thank you, moderator. Thank you very much. So I think if I have to answer, answer those questions, so health workers were, who, were, who were working with the, the quality improvement teams were, were really uh, organized um, distributed among all the, the, the units. And as I, I, as I said, there were 509 uh, centers and of course, uh, and, and workers. That's what we need to stress here is that they were not all nurses as we saw in the table earlier. So implants were, provided by the health system, but we, well, we gave number, we, we, we gave the initial numbers and, and ordered those implants before closing. But in any case, the health system also made efforts. I mean, they provided uh, implants for uh, and equipment for training, provided inputs, so. About the nurse, um, maybe Mr. Moderator should answer that question. But so regarding its 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 their skills, right? The the scope of uh, skills. Of course, he cannot do the unqualified health worker cannot do as much as a qualified health worker. But if he's very good to deliver babies, for example, of course, the health 
where that are around will allow him to come and deliver a baby. For me, his package of activity, is, it just depends on the needs, the, the equipment it, within the, the, the facility. Because it's, it, of course, it's not the same. The package is not the same, but it, it depends on how, what they are able to do, what they were trained to do. This is what I, I would say. Mr. Moderator, maybe you can add on to this. Yeah, Idrissa, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, uh, is there any question in English, maybe? I did not receive anything in English. So, oh, there's another question here in French. Idrissa, maybe you can have a look at it. I will, I will add a comment at the end, but if you can take this one. So, Aguima, uh, the region, Zindert region, has more than 500 health hubs. So, uh, while the intervention covered only 210 in the region. Yeah, I think I replied to that question already. And again, it, it's, it's planned. In, in the project, of course, there are more regions and there are more health hubs that we need to cover, but we, we would like, we would really like to, to scale up. We, we cannot, we could not reach it for now. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have something else to say? Is there anything else you would like to? comment on because it looks like you, you have a lot to share and and it's a shame that we don't have enough time of course i would love to give you more information to share more and to talk among each other but, uh, but of course feel free to add things to the chat so we can keep talking together no no thank you very much dr Usaini. i was just saying that i wanted to offer um uh, an additional comment because uh, of course uh, I, I understand that it was not uh, possible to cover all the health hurts. I was just reminding of the numbers. But thank you very much. Oh, okay, I see. Mr. Moderator? Just, just to reassure you regarding the impact too. Uh, we are also working on different projects with the same approach, um, meaning, you know, the training of pe people in Mirya, but also the Kulaoa project, which is um, going to cover six health districts. So we basically coordinated so that there wouldn't be an overlap of, uh, of health huts. So I believe, I really trust that we have, we're offering a very decent uh, health coverage uh, through Pathfinder. Thank you so much for this precision here. And especially regarding the offer uh, outside of uh, Pathfinder uh, coverage area, we also, the different partners are intervening and they are, different initiatives that implement all the different options that are available and you've presented those very well but today with regards to um, the questions that are being asked it is it was really about um, setting up an ideal environment but also with regards to the DMSC and the different implants, uh, yeah. I, the, so this is this is the difference. You, you, we also so we have the implants on the one hand, but we also have the the DMPA on the other. So this comes as a compliment, and um, but all of these methods help scale up, uh, promote contraceptive methods in those regions. 
all of this within the framework of the family planning within, within Niger. We also work with a charter that promotes injectables, but also uh, the DMPA. And before I conclude, we need to add We just finished a month ago the strategy. We finished the strategy in Niger. And the, the, the most important conclusions that we drew is that there's, there's a, indeed a delegation of tasks. It, it, uh, it is happening, but a lot remains to be, to be done. But we will follow your recommendation, especially in terms of increasing the coverage of uh, task sharing, but also the capacity building, training uh, CHWs, but also applying resources on the domestic level, on a district level and regional level to accompany the delegation of those tasks. We now we hope we are going to keep working with those partner those partners that supporting us for 2021 2025 with regards to the different strategies that are ongoing. And we sincerely think, we trust that we can bring our contribution and sharing our knowledge and experience to help our partners with this implementation of this uh, task sharing in Niger. So ladies and gentlemen, no, no questions, no question in English, Jen? No, no, no questions in English. Do you have any comments you would like to share or add with us? No. Zaku, any comments before I before I conclude? Wonderful. It was it was excellent. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, once again, I really want to thank you very deeply uh, for your presence and your path and your participation, and thank you to Pathfinder for this amaz amazing initiatives. Uh, side by side with the Ministry of Health and to promote um, health, uh, sexual and health and reproductive rights in Niger to help us at the ministry so that we can boost so with those services in our country and of course reach our program uh, goals. This webinar is a beautiful initiative that we must continue with the participation of other players. So I encourage you to register for the next webinar, which is scheduled on May 31st. And it's going to be focusing on task sharing on the theme of the DMPA offer. It will be animated by Hakim, inshallah. So thank you to everybody who contributed to this webinar, Pathfinder, the, the, financial, the financial partners for Pathfinder and everybody who is supporting us. So it's a beautiful initiative. Let me reiterate that. And we want to continue on, on that path. So, for example, the promotion of, of the postpartum um, family planning initiatives. So we are reaching the end of this webinar. I hope we didn't go over too much. And we hope to see you very, very soon. Thank you so much to everybody. Have a, have a, have a lovely evening and a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Idrissa. It was great. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs>